The first time I picked up a camera, I realised how much fun it was. I couldn't pinpoint exactly what it was that I liked about it, but it just felt right. Seeing an image of an epic landscape, or even of an intricate detail, really makes me see the bigger picture and rids my body of stress. Aerial imagery has always intrigued me and has been a genre that I've liked. I really find it gives a unique perspective which was, up until now, hard to access. From the air a whole new world of imagery has opened up to you. One can find textures and compositions which one would have never thought existed. It really is a case of the sky's the limit this time. After a long drive up through the Karoo, we eventually arrived in a town called Prince Albert. This is where we stopped off for the weekend to recharge our batteries before we took another nine hour drive up to Grafenet. The weather was very windy that weekend and dry as the land had not seen rain in many weeks. Sadly, because of the wind being so high, I was not able to fly my drone while I was there.
young, I picked up a camera and took photos with it and I really enjoyed it. I found it really relaxing and I got a huge sense of satisfaction from it after I had taken the photo. Then it just became a case of me wanting to learn more about the art form. So I researched with lots of YouTube videos and learned more and more about the topic. And yeah, since then I've just tried to learn as much as I can and improve my skills. And yeah, I just love the feeling that I get after I've taken a photo which I'm proud of. It's not like a case of knowing exactly what made me interested in it. It's just something which has come about and I found a passion in it and it's fantastic. When I took my first aerial photograph, I remember how, how happy I was. It, aerial photography had always been something which I'd been highly interested in. I'd seen um, people take photos with drones for many years before, and I've always thought, wow, imagine if I could have a drone and take photos of what I see from the air. And I remember always being so shocked about how things looked from up in the air because I hadn't seen many photos or, or video for that matter of the areas of Cape Town which I went to which had been taken with a drone. So when I took my photo, when, when I took my first photo with the drone, I remember it was it was uh, misty cliffs and I took it of the ocean rolling onto, onto, the, onto the sea with the waves going over the rocks. I remember how I was like wow that is so beautiful, I was so chuffed with myself. It really was, I, I was hooked from then on and yeah, I've enjoyed it since then. It's really something which I would love to do for as many years to come. And yeah, definitely, it's, it's great. Unfortunately, when we arrived up at the viewpoint for the Valley of Desolation, it was a no-fly zone, so I was not permitted to fly my drone there. It was amazing just to see the Dolomite columns rise up tens of meters into the air and have 360 degree views of the surrounding landscape. It's definitely something which I'll not be forgetting anytime soon. Ridiculous views around here. Always got to do some location scouting during midday to make sure I can find the correct composition when it comes to the evening with my drone. I think it should be alright to fly it here. I don't see many people around. It's the one thing with drone photography is you've always got to get permission for everything. You can't just like sneak in there because it's so so loud. But this should be a seriously epic location to do it in. Like I'm just thinking of all the shots you could get. Yeah, hopefully here I'll be able to get first photograph in the collection of five, which uh, will be the arid region, or well, semi-arid. I mean, it looks really green now, but it's not actually.
still still the crew. Yeah, it definitely has just been a lot of rain recently, so it looks more green than it usually would. But I mean, these dolomite columns up here, absolutely amazing, especially when they catch the light. You all, they're crazy, crazy stuff. My favorite aspect of the of the Karoo was definitely the light. Um, the light in the Karoo is just different to how it is in other parts of South Africa. You just really get that very golden, golden glow in, in the afternoon and morning. And it definitely uh, radiates throughout the photograph when you take it. It's definitely, you can see something different. You get that sort of, that desert light. There's always something different about the light when you're in a dry region. Of, of high altitude and that's definitely my favorite aspect of of photographing in the Kumbabur was definitely that Karoo light which you get. You get a shot here of the trees. Bird's eye view should be good. Oh, that's high up, really high. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be a good shot here. Oh, there, that's 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 a nice shot there. Nice. <laughs> you thought you'd be collecting nice photos of green stuff in the career. I'm going to bracket this shot with a three exposure bracket and uh, that should help with keeping the highlights down and take the shot yeah that's going to look good now another photo here with the road entering the trees and that's going to be really nice as well you have your leading line leading you through the image with the road and then the trees give a nice sort of Element to flies. Yes, that looks actually really nice. It's a good clip. Okay, coming back. Coming over now in sport mode. Coming down. I'm going to change the batteries out quickly. Now it's my chance to do the calibration dance, as they call it. Always have to do this with DJI stuff. Undo the run.
The following morning I went to capture the photos which I didn't get the previous day. When I was there I took up the drone and photographed the compositions that I had in mind. And they turned out way better than expected. As far as how I feel about the work, it really depends on whether I'm proud of it or not. Sometimes I feel like, oh, I got really shit work there, and you know, the light wasn't good, or the composition failed me, I was rushing too much and didn't let that clip hang quite as long as I wanted it to. But there's also the times where I feel really proud of myself and I'm amped to get it in the computer, edit it, or see how it will fit into the documentary. Um, so yeah, it really depends a lot on the work. But during this process, I have, I have to say that most of the time, I felt proud of some of the, of, of a good portion of the work that I created. Obviously, there were some instances where I was like, no, I've got to go back to that location another day and reshoot it. And I did sometimes get the opportunity to do that. And then I got the work which I was proud of. Photographing around Cape Town with the oceans was really, really amazing. What I really liked about photographing around here was the colour of the ocean and what you could bring out within the ocean, especially when it was in contrast with the land and the way that you can have those layered colours and textures when land meets sea was uh, really um, interesting and you could get some really nice shots with it. And that was definitely what I really enjoyed about photographing around the Cape, was getting those different, different textures and colours with the ocean. And uh, the ocean also had many different textures, whether it was waves or whether it was just swell, whether it was still, whether there was wind blowing over it. It was just a constant changing environment and it definitely was challenging but very fun to photograph and the results were stellar.
my favourite location to photograph is definitely Chapman's Peak on the, the first time that I went there because there happened to be a, a yacht in the bay and I saw that yacht and I was like, okay, I know the Mavic Air doesn't have very good battery life nor does it have the best range signal-wise because it's Wi-Fi operated. thought, let me give it a go and fly it out to that yacht and see if I can get some cool photos. And yeah, I did just that, took some amazing photos and I have to admit the one photo of the yacht is my favorite image that I've captured throughout this process. I just, I, I love it. Um, it was always something which I had seen and I think, yeah, yeah, take a take a photo of a yacht would be would be really cool on the ocean, um, and I did, and that's definitely my my most favourite photograph that I had taken, and thus, Chapman's Peak was my favourite location because of that. One of the things which I find the most difficult in this process is definitely dealing with the no-fly zones because often I find to try find a location where I can fly is often the hardest bit, never mind flying in that location. So yeah, I mean there have been a lot of locations where I've been really excited when before I started this project I was thinking, wow, with a drone I can get this shot, this shot and this shot. And then I realized, oh no, that's near an airport, or that's private airspace, or that is someone's private land, or that is, uh, the list goes on and on for reasons why you cannot fly. Um, but obviously there are, there are those locations where you can get permission from a landowner, or you happen, it happens to be in a, in a flyable location, and then you really appreciate being able to fly there. So. Yes, it's very difficult trying to find places to be able to fly in, but if you find a place that you can fly in, you definitely appreciate it a lot more, I would say. All the dam levels low. There's fish over there. I think it's got even low since the last time I was here. It's quite dirty. Yeah. Pretty damn dirty, bro. But it's nah sun. Khan. <laughs> well, this, is, this, this could be quite cool to do some flying around here, I think. Yeah. Over the, over the water's edge. Unfortunately it was really wet and rainy on our first day in the Pickenburg. All we could do was sit by the fire and wait for the following day. And my word was it a good one. So this morning we're out here again. 
Out up at the dam, and uh, it's flipping cold. That's what I can tell you. But we've got a sick cloud conversion down there, and uh, no clouds to be seen. So I think when the sun comes up, it's going to be perfect for um, for the drone. Hopefully, we can get some really nice compositions and some epic footage. Yeah, it's all for getting up for sunrise, but it's always worth it in the end to get the nicest time of the day. But yeah, I'm really chuffed with that cloud inversion. I didn't think I was going to get that off the coast. But yeah, it looks really nice. Wind is picking up though, so hopefully it doesn't get too strong up here. I mean, it just adds to the to the chill factor. I mean, yeah, it's very, very, very cold. <laughs> Just waiting for the sun now as you do. Maximum flight altitude reached. You got in sight, dude. Where's the drone, dude? Up above me. Do this. Scouting out here in this forest, and there's some forest up there. We're also going to go to check if there are going to be any good drone images because this morning was cool down there. But you kind of like, I don't have enough battery life to fly all the way up here and explore around with the Mavic Air. So we go, my Callum and I, going to have a look around here and hopefully find some cool areas where we can take some, take some nice images for the sunset. Meanwhile, we're watching this thing come in, which is quite hectic like it keeps pushing in and then receding back like yeah I don't really know what it's doing but if that comes in it's gonna be mint it's gonna be super nice you can imagine just flying through the the clouds with the drone that's gonna look nice You know, sometimes you've got to take photos of your mushrooms with your, with your phone as well, because it looks nice. That is going to look fire. I mean, it's slightly artificial because I did uncover it, but you know what? I'm not that much of a naturalist. Yeah. 
Yeah, so finding someone to get the best out of areas, you just gotta sit in them and just explore them and don't really go in there with a sort of rushed element. We're trying to get everything all in one go. Sometimes it's just best to <coughs> just to be in it, see where the light is, and then when the golden hour comes, then you or the nice time, the nice light comes, then you know where to shoot and how to shoot the location. You really become in tune with it and you know it well. So that's the plan this afternoon, just just scouting. That's the biggest time consumer. I've got my drone with me, but I take it out if I see something really amazing. But uh, for now, it's just all about taking it all in, taking the environment in, and... Uh, Enjoying it, because you know, if you're not enjoying it, why are you doing it? That's my mom. Yeah, so uh, we um, we got caught doing mushroom stuff now. So now it, we're kind of trying to find mushrooms. Also, while looking for photos, I mean. There's so many things to do up here, you would never think so. You literally can't get bored. There's just too many things to do. But I'm definitely getting a sense of the environment, so I think it should be, should be good. I can't think what else it would be, though. Sam, I thought there was a mushroom. It's a boss, bro. Come on. <laughs> really? That's some. That's lame. This environment's so cool. It's really nice. So I think now. I mean, I think. I think we can do some flying inside of the forest. As far as video goes. Photos, but I've got a camera, I don't need a drone for that. But, um. Maybe further up we can find some stuff which will lend itself well to, to aerial photography. We can see about that. Yeah, this will be one of the last areas I'm photographing, so I think I'm going to get some nice stuff. Because we already lost one day this weekend, we're really having to stay an extra night because Saturday and Friday we didn't manage to get anything because of the rain. So that put a lot of, a lot of pressure. There's not many places where when you don't speak you absolutely hear nothing besides the birds. Like your ears ring, it's so quiet. It's great. So now we're going to go up this way. Further. There. You know, just like that. Exactly. So you're going to go. We're going to go through there um, to some more woods like this further up the mountain and then there's more on the other side there as well so we've got a lot to look through we've just like touched the surface so far so plenty more to come I mean shit we've just been spending an hour in there messing around with mushrooms I mean what the hell <laughs> that stuff doesn't happen See what I mean? Like, look over there. It's like stopped. But who knows? Let's hope it kind of comes in more. It's still going to be cool, nevertheless. I mean, flying a drone that's going to look sick. Um, yeah. It's like being in another world. Like, you never think you're on the west coast here. Nothing like being on the N7. Here's the other wood. This one's a lot bigger, I think. There should be some queer mushrooms. Yeah, go in there, it looks nice. But we uh, should be able to find some nice stuff in here. Who knows? Maybe you can have find a drone in the top of the trees but not above the trees. That sounds like a recipe for disaster though. 
I don't feel like crashing yet. I'm not, I'm not mentally prepared for that. But yeah, possibilities are endless. That's all I can say. Finally. <laughs> you are hectic. Filming. So let's go for it. I have to clean all this gear so much when I get home. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, let's go down this way this time, eh? <laughs> oh, this is so spiky as well. This is not the best way. Yeah, we probably should have gone the way we came.
I often find that the location itself inspires me the most. Just being able to look around and see all the different possibilities of images which I could create just gets me ready and I am out there as soon as I can be with my drone. I definitely have the urge to try and capture that as I see it so I can hopefully get other people to appreciate it like I do and I'm sure many people do. Our time in the Pickerberg had finally come to an end, but there was still one shot that I really wanted to get of the Fasfeld Pass which we came up when we first came to this location. So on the way back to Cape Town we stopped off in a lay-by, and I flew the drone and got the photos that I wanted. I was very pleased because when I first bought the drone I had that shot in mind. One can use a skill to influence the way that we see or change the world for the better, then I think that that's one to be proud of. <laughs> 